Okay. Hi guys, thanks for watching. So, you're watching this, you're a new golfer, I imagine. Um, so I've designed these videos to help you understand what's going through. It's a beginner's guide into golf. We're gonna cover putting, chipping, pitching, irons, and driver, and eventually we're gonna get on the golf course. This is, a, this is a, very similar to the package I offer here at Salisbury Golf Centre. Uh, it's six, 79 pounds. Um, it's three and a half hours of coaching. And funny enough, Keith here is, is taking it. He's is, is, uh, started the course, he's finished the course in fact. Uh -huh. um, and I've decided to do this video just to, just to help you out to understand what's expecting of it. So you don't have to feel worried or nervous uh, when, when having lessons. So, um, so Keith, tell us all a bit about yourself and where you started from. So uh, four weeks ago, seven, uh, four, five weeks ago, I yep. uh, decided to take up golf um, and looking on the internet and doing the normal research you're doing before you get into any other sport uh, was quite daunting. YouTube, yep. the old classic, <laughs> how to play golf YouTube. Google. <laughs> many, many of them, are, um, yeah. So obviously the journey starts with buying some clubs and then, yeah. and then hitting them. And I was just aimlessly hitting balls, really. Um, I weren't able to string together a game uh, mainly yeah. because the consistency consistency wasn't there and that's all because I didn't know how to use each club the kind of strokes and and the stuff that I should be focusing on yeah. all I was focused on was hitting the ball yeah and doing that at a really poor standard yeah so, so you're I focusing think. on the ball mm -hmm. you completely forgot the outcome of mm -hmm. the actual uh, uh, the result of the golf ball you're yeah. very because you're very concerned of where it's going etc Keith is um, uh, very good at fishing, fly fishing, he was saying. Um, so I think you, you're, I mean, you got to a very good standard. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was, it was carp fishing, not fly oh, fishing. Oh, okay, carp fishing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the, is the, it? Re the real carp Sorry. fishing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, fished, I fished army army level. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fished up for, I did, I, I put my whole life into fishing, um, but it's just not the sport for, for my lifestyle now. So golf is able to fit around a busy, yeah um, entrepreneurial lifestyle let's say yeah um, yeah and that's and it's something that i wanted you need that work-life balance yeah uh, so golf's going to add that absolutely but getting into it from the start is such a daunting place yeah because there's just so much to 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 absorb in yeah. order to learn so obviously i should have started with you a little bit earlier than i did yeah um, because i probably wasted two or three weeks where i was just pointlessly hitting balls and just wasting time. Yeah, I, I think that's the most, a really important part to, 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 to uh, talk about is um, that the, the frustrating, uh, frustrating of the, the golf can create. As um, soon as it starts doing that, go see your PJ professional um, and get the enjoyment out of it. If, you, if you're even at any level, if you start frustrate, getting frustrated of the golf, lose the love of golf, go and see a coach he or she would then endorse um, their enthusiasm uh, on you uh, and, and get you enjoying uh, the game, a, goal, a game of golf again uh, by tweaking it, uh, tweaking your, your swing here and there, all sorts of things they can work on. The, the, the golf professionals are very good at their job. Um, um, also as well, what I'd like to talk about is where you, you were a, a, a good level at cart fishing, mm -hmm. I should imagine you expect to be pretty good at golf. And, and it's kind of like, you know, why can't I get this? I'm pretty good at, you know. It's, it's definitely one of the most frustrating sports if you haven't got the guidance. Yeah. Because, it, because you're trying to correct things that you don't know what you're doing wrong. Yeah. But the end product is wrong. But yes. It starts with the, how you set the set up right from the start. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So having that guidance was priceless, really. Yeah. So uh, also as well. So as a beginner golfer, what you find is you you make a mistake and then you can quite easily fix something. Uh, uh, um, put a bandage. We I call it a sort of a bandage in, uh, in your swing. Mm -hmm. Let's say if it goes out left, uh, you're then. Uh, or if it goes out right, then your golfer will then probably get their hands really strong. They don't even know it. They get really strong and then they might hit some straight shots but they're providing them a big hook shot as well. And, and so from my point of view, after sort of unravel it, 
Um, so if the sooner the better, basically. Sooner the better, just if you're gonna start at golf, get out there, go and see your, your coach uh, and to, to put you in the right path to, in order to learn things um, uh, and, and then stop picking up any bad habits, basically. So um, we're gonna start off with some pitching. Yep. Um, so we're gonna do off some pitching, give you an insight of what, uh, what do's and don'ts um, uh, and we go from there. So let's start off with pitching. Pitch shots, generally you use a lofted club. So my pet hay is that golf clubs have got P on it and S's on it as well. A um, lot of golfers, fortunately Keith didn't, uh, he knew he could use it everywhere, everywhere other than um, uh, a bunker. Um, but the S on it, so, some golfers seem to think that the, 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 the sand wedge can only be used in the bunker. So we can use it anywhere around the golf course. Uh, P stands for pitching wedge. And then you've got the A wedge, which is a approach wedge or um, a gap wedge as well. So it finds between, between the um, pitching wedge and sand wedge. And perhaps you might have the lob wedge as well. As well. Mm -hmm. So those are your wedges there. You could probably bring in the nine iron in if you wanted to. Um, but generally we're gonna you start with the pitch shots. Um, you see a shot where it goes a nice and high. You might see a clip right now. This is, uh, this is really not too tough for him. We saw him pitch one in yesterday at 16 and really got his rally, kept the momentum up after a birdie at 15. Yeah, he played this one perfectly yesterday. So this will be interesting just to, this is all about him, all about Steve Strickland, our nerve. You know, we know technically he can play it and uh, this would be an indication to tell us uh, exactly how he's feeling inside. Pretty good. It goes nice and generally high, um, uh, and it's not a full swing. Okay, so here you're very much just working on your accuracy and distance control. That's the skill when it comes to the, your your pitch shot. Okay, mm -hmm. so to start off with, so golf beginner golf is really is very much the strike of it, and then maybe the in insights and in the uh, into the distance control. Mm -hmm. So uh, Keith is going to hit a shot here. With, or, as, or as I am now. <laughs> no, don't change anything. Don't really bring in any bad habits. Um, but so what he's got here, he's got his feet slight, um, shot width apart. No need to get it wider. No need to get it a bit more uh, narrow. It's just perfect um, uh, width there. His left foot is slightly further back. This helps you rotate through because um, uh, it's a shorter swing. There's less dynamic movement through the shot. So um, the left foot is slightly open, maybe sort of like 11 o'clock or so, um, and the left foot might be further back slightly. Again, it's just gonna help you turn through. Uh, ball position, generally in the middle. We wanna keep it in the middle, underneath your nose. Grip, now when it comes to your grip, is um, there's many versions out there. You've got the interlock grip, um, you've got the overlap grip, uh, so overlap grip, you've got the interlock grip, and you've got the baseball grip. Um, Keith's got the uh, baseball grip, that's fine. Um, general rule is your hands are gonna to be together. So if the hands are far away apart, uh, then they're gonna be working simultaneously. Okay, so hands together. Um, so thumbs generally in the middle or slightly a bit biased to the right hand side there. Uh, and we'll leave it as that generally. So um, at now as if I was have you here, okay, I would then just work on it a little bit more specifically, gives you a little bit more insight to uh, how a group grip should be, but that's a brief introduction on your grip. Um, okay, uh, last of all is your pressure, a little bit more weight on the left-hand side. So just gonna shuffle, shove a little bit more pressure on the left-hand side. What's that gonna do is gonna encourage you to hit down on the golf ball, because again, it's not a lot, not a lot of dynamic movement through the shot. So we're gonna hit a 50-yard shot mm -hmm. down there and see how you get on from there. Lovely strike there, Keith. Um, what I would say to Keith right now is a shorter back, short, shorter forward through. Um, so we're looking for equal portions generally, um, if not a little bit further back. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so forward through through the ball. So obviously not up here. Yep. Um, so it's generally a little bit uh, shorter forward through. There's a good connection on that one and good direction on that as well towards the target. Good. Lovely. 
All right, so that is a bit of insight onto your pitch shots. So guys, we're on our seven irons now. So we've done a bit of pitching uh, and you're using irons and you've got a few more clubs in your bag now. There's a few more selection of clubs. For a beginner, it's a daunting, <laughs> daunting view. <laughs> what one do I pick? Um, so always a good start point is a seven iron. Uh, you get a nice bit of loft on the, on the club, on the shot. Also, is get a fair bit, a bit of distance as well. Get, get bit, quite a bit of rewarding of the ball going out towards the target there. So always start off with a seven iron. Mix it up a little bit as well as you progress, as, as you get a better golfer. Mix it up a little bit. So it's funny that um, I do uh, distances for golfers. And so I go from all the way from the driver down to the sandwich and I'll find out how far the ball goes for them. And um, they have the favorite club. And generally, let's say the seven iron goes 160, the five iron might go 160 and the six iron might go 140. Um, it's because they're, they're their favorite club, they tend to use practice it all the time. So mix it up a little bit, try to have um, as, uh, feel comfortable with all your clubs there. Generally, it might be a bit more difficult with the four iron, but try to pers persevere with the, those, um, the higher clubs there. But um, yeah, uh, where were, where did we improve on? I think we, we I think the, the I think you noticed the problem that I was like almost brushed over the irons because there was too many to go for. Yeah. So when when I came to you, you said yeah, let's take this let's take a seven out. Let's yeah. focus on hitting the seven in in the correct manner, and yeah. then that will go up and down the range, um, and then you can find the ranges afterwards. Yeah. So that was definitely something because I just looked at them in, in pure confusion, like why have I got from four to nine of the same kind of club yeah. without understanding what they do and how to hit Yeah, them. so you've got the, dis uh, the, contr the, the contr uh, trajectory. So obviously the, uh, the five iron will go lower than the nine iron. Probably go to probably the same height, mm -hmm. but the nine iron go up quicker. Yeah. Um, and the five iron generally would go the same sort of height uh, um, as the uh, five iron, but would go at a more of a lower um, penetrating ball flight to start off with. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Keith's swing was very fast on the backswing. I just wanted to get the, the <laughs> I just wanted to get the club up and down as fast as I could. Yeah. And obviously, that was that was leading to complete inconsistencies. Yeah. And not hitting the ball where I needed to hit, and I, it was taking my focus off the ball. I was thinking about where the shot's going to go before I've even raised the club. Yeah. And you noticed that straight away and, and corrected it. Yeah, it, it was very keen. Very keen to hit that golf ball. And he was kind of hit the golf ball on the backswing. Yeah. I think <laughs> my club head speed was faster on the way out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was on the way down. <laughs> so we, we've uh, so slowed his backswing down a little bit. Not encourage, not, I don't want to um, disencourage him, if that's such a word, uh, to, to slow his swing down so much because he's very athletic. He gets the ball and there's, there's a lot of enjoyment in hitting that goal ball. Not as high as you can, but obviously holding that, controlling that follow through there. I think, but, I think um, you to, said to, it to, near enough every single club, but it was making the club do the work instead of yeah, the movement, yeah. especially on the upswing. That's a great saying. Let the club do the work. Oh, such a great saying, that one. I use it quite a lot, that one. Um, yeah, so uh, ball position in the middle with your seven irons. Um, grip, we're going to same as your pitching wedge, grip. Again, for Keith, he needs to get his hands together, make sure his hands together. At some point, we would like to get the interlock grip. Um, he might want to sort of start doing that at his own pace. But um, uh, grip position uh, is really important there. Uh, not a separate, not separately, not separately there. Um, so ball position is in the middle. Slightly wider stance with, for him as well. Uh, so. You got a stick here, so you can see your shoulders are there from that position there. And um, I think originally you had your feet kind of like closed, well, but the feet are open like that. It was like a duck. It was a duck. <laughs> 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 duck <laughs> and his, his feet, were, his toes were as wide as his shoulders, but his, however, his hips, um, no, sorry, um, his um, heels weren't as quite as wide. So I've got his feet a little bit more, um, what's the word, uh, squared up with his um, body. Mm -hmm and his feet slightly wider to his shoulder width that apart. Made, that made a huge difference, like the foundation of the shot, really. Found that, yeah, so you've got uh, so, um, legs, so your foundation, there's a, um, your scaffolding. There's, there's, imagine the scaffolding, you've got to have a strong foundation there to, 
to get a, um, a, a good follow through, really, generally, because what you do, if he's a, a sort of not, uh, shorter, shorter uh, stance there, he's less likely to then follow through um, and it might fall over. So he re reduce himself to not turn through so much. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I would, um, it's a bit nervous, I imagine, over this golf ball, we'll see where as it goes. So I would always have a couple of practice swings, build a bit of confidence up um, before you hit the golf ball, have a practice swing there. At this point here, you'll probably have a two or three practice swings because you're a beginner, okay? Mm -hmm. But work towards having one practice swing. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to be too, you might find yourself behind golfers, um, slow, trying to speed things up and you end up hitting the golf balls fast because you've got people behind you. Yeah. Work towards, just try to have a one practice swing. Um, but there's nothing wrong with having a two or three practice swings, but try to encourage yourself to get one practice swing. I found it that if I weren't brushing the floor yeah. with a practice swing, then the, the, the actual the, shot was going to be going to be useless. It's a bit of a smelly shot as well. Yeah, so uh, it's like a rehearsal. So I, I always encourage golfers for, for of every uh, ability to have their practice swings just as good as their, uh, the actual um, shot in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, that's good, buddy. Anticipation of where it's gone. Yeah. Slightly left. Slightly left. Just hit the ground a little bit. Yep. Club flipped over a little bit there. Just hit the ground there on as well before the golf ball. Mm -hmm. But it was in a good process. You had a couple of practice swings. Um, and I think what we would probably, I would um, coach him to sort of advise him. So I want to get in his head. I want, his, I want him to be a coach himself. He want, I want him to be his own coach. So from that one there, you would, uh, you would say, I would be saying to you, for you actually saying to yourself, mm -hmm. Have a, have a practice swing, make sure of hitting in front of the golf ball, not behind the golf yeah. ball, or to make a good shot. And hopefully, he'll hit a better shot than that. And what I get from all get, um, beginner golfers is trying to get the, the bad shot. Um, if you're going to hit a bad shot, it's just to get the, a better shot from that. Um, get good feedback from that. Yeah. So, cool. All right, so that's the seven irons. Lovely. <laughs> he loves his clubs. Uh, so we've done your wedges, we've done the um, irons, now we're on to our woods. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go hybrids uh, and followed by driver. Uh, so hybrid is mixed between two different clubs, uh, being a hybrid, mm -hmm. mixed between an iron and a wood. So it's a shaped as an iron, uh, sorry, sorry, shaped as a wood, the club face. It's hollow, uh, similar like a wood, uh, but there's the same length as and the same loft as typically is what it, the number is on there. So this that's a three hybrid. So there'd be the same loft and the same length as the three iron. Um, hybrid is so much easier to to um, to get on with than than irons, um, just because it get the ball up in the air. So if you hit a bit smelly shot, the ball tends to go a little bit higher, a little bit further as well. So you don't get so much penalised from hitting a bad shot. Um, so uh, hybrids, you just bring the ball a little bit further forward from your iron position, but not quite as much as you would do with your driver, which we'll come to at a later point. Um, we want to brush the grass, the difference between our irons and driver, uh, sorry, irons and hybrid. Irons, you generally want to encourage yourself to hit down the golf ball, um, but uh, with hybrids, you want to just brush the grass. Uh, you should be listening to the, 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 the sound of the strike on the, the mat. It should be quite quiet rather than certainly the wedges. You're going to be really, really hitting hard on that mat there. Um, any questions? No, I find it, I find it a lot easier to, to hit these. And I think it's good practice to, to use this to, for me to step onto the driver and be comfortable with the driver yeah. afterwards. So it's like, it's exactly what it says on the turn, a hybrid in between. Yeah, yeah. So I, this is probably my favorite part. It's a nice, it's a nice introduction into words. Um, definitely uh, for beginners, um, I would always recommend 
if you can add a, a club in your bag and you haven't got a hybrid, get one. Uh, it's, it's, it could be your favorite club. It could be your favorite club. Uh, if you're not quite, if, if I say there's a few golfers out there, I say if you don't love it, if you don't like it, learn to love it. Because um, especially if you don't hit the ball to, to, particularly too quite far, typically you end up with a hybrid um, the next sort of shot, haven't you? So uh, yeah, all right. So ball slightly further forward in front of your stance there. Yep. Uh, you could have your uh, right shoulder drop down a little bit. That encourages a bit more of a shallow angle of attack. So what we want to do is more of a shallow angle of attack is more from here and um, the club comes a bit lower rather than a steep angle attack that gets really quite high in the ball and it's kind of like stabby and hitting down the golf ball. Very similar to our wedges. So right shoulder drop down slightly. Um, you could have a slightly um, stronger grip position so you ha your, your thumbs a bit slightly, a little bit more biased to the right side. Okay, that stops the ball going out right. So if, the ball, if I see the ball go out right, I'll encourage you to have a bit of a slightly stronger grip position. If it goes relatively quite straight or left, keep it as it is. Um, yeah. All right, so have a few practice swings. Just learn again, ball, brush the grass, and see where it goes from there. Was yeah, that was a thin shot. That would have been a top shot. Nice, nice follow through that one there. Good, you get through on the left-hand side. Give it a go, see what happens. Not far off, it was a good strike. It was a bit right, that one. Yeah. A bit right, that one. So hit off the toe slightly. Uh, again, then so that I would encourage you to maybe get your hands turn over a little bit, have a look at your grip a little bit, have a look at your posture. Um, but you're gonna hit some many shots, aren't you? Yeah. It's, it's, um, but you get an idea of what's required to hit a good shot, okay? Yeah. Uh, as part of these lessons. So um, we're going to driver next. So yeah. let's get that, the beast. We're going to tame that beast. Um, so you're using a driver um, and you're using a T-peg. So a T-peg is very much like a, uh, a launch pad for the ball to go up in the air. Um, and ideally, you've got the equator of the golf ball, the center of the line there, that you want to line up to that, cent that top part of the club there, okay? There's many different uh, T-pegs out there. A um, uh, pink one is generally kind of suited. Um, a castle pink one is generally suited for most um, uh, uh, 460C drivers. You get the orange ones a little bit taller. Uh, and then the, I think the next one from that might be sort of gray ones or the um, sort of white ones. Might be pink tees I found really to give me a consistent height. Because yes. It will stop. The, the tee from going into the ground. Yeah, yeah. It's got that yeah, exactly. Almost. Yeah, so, um, so if you generally, if you hit a ball, if the, you tee the ball low, you might find it getting a, cut, a slice of the shot. Um, if you tee the ball high, you could encourage yourself to see a bit more of a ball going left like that. So, quite rightly, uh, it's, consistency is the holy grail of golf. If you can work towards a consistent ball flight, you're going to self do yourself a, 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 amount, amount, uh, a lot of favours there. Mm -hmm. And if you can get a good, consistent um, height of T, then you're, you're halfway there. Halfway there, absolutely. <laughs> um, so ball position, next. Uh, so little step, big step, as we've learned with your hybrid. Let's feet together, that's it. Cool. So slightly wider with your right foot if you want, um, uh, well, it generally is right, uh, with your right foot slightly wider. Because it's, um, you want to have a bit more of a stronger foundation, the a lower half a little bit more firmer, a um, bit more, give you a bit more stability in the swim because it's a much faster swing. Um, so ball position, grip position, have it slightly stronger than on, uh, over on the right hand side. So your thumbs may be pointing slightly more further around the club, around on the right hand side here. Um, so ball position, hands, and finally your right shoulder was gonna just drop down. Again, that's gonna really encourage yourself to get the ball up in the air. So big secret here when it comes to your driver is to keep your head behind the golf ball. If you can learn to do that, you're gonna hit golf, the ball go up in the air. You might likely to hit the ground a little bit, but just learn learn to 
hit the ball with the head behind the ball. Um, you, where, if you were to hit the ground before the golf ball with your head behind it, um, it's because you're just you're using your arms to flick it out a little bit. Uh, and it's just a case of just learning um, to gain, to, uh, to encourage this position here through the shot rather than losing it out there, okay? Um, yeah, so ball position, grip, and right shoulder. And keep your head behind the ball, competitive irons. So irons, you're obviously trying to carry a bit more head in front of the golf ball. Have a few practice swings. You could have a few practice swings and just put yourself over the tee peg and learn to clip that tee peg. So right shoulder drop down, that's it, cool. Give it a go. Pressure's on. <laughs> Lost it. So the clouds are all white. They're, oh yeah, 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 right down the bottom. Brilliant. Beautiful shot. Nice shot, mate. Take that. Cool, so uh, that's your driver. Mm -hmm. We're gonna move on to your, doing. hopefully the weather's all right, we can get on the golf course and we'll do some putting and chipping. So um, let's get out there. That's my favorite part. <laughs> cool. So we're doing chipping now, we're outside. They were found um, a bit of a lull in the old weather. Uh, it's not raining here in Salisbury, so uh, we're going to do some chipping now. Um, the chip shot, what you find is the ball will go up in the air and runs majority of the shot. There's a difference between pitching and, uh, pitching and chip shots is the ball goes up in the air with my, very much a pitch shot and a chip, go, chip shot goes in the air for um, a small amount of time and runs majority of the, of the, um, the sort of shot there. And um, generally, it's more of a high, uh, more of a, an iron sort of club, maybe nine iron, eight iron, seven iron, and even if you Google Tiger Woods three wood chip shot, I think he holds it with a uh, three. Tiger wood. with a three wood out of the chipping area, just like he did from behind the ten green yesterday. How Executed it great, Ten's and how good is this? Shot of the day. The edge of the off the edge of the green there. So. Um, <laughs> you could use, use that in your uh, in your bag there. There are many, vers many versions that you could use your three wood there, or hybrid. Um, okay, so ball position is generally in the middle. You could bring you could bring it back of the stance a little bit. So what club you got here? Uh, eight. Eight iron. So typically the board uh, run out more so if you go pitching with it would be about 50 50 a land halfway and run out um but with an eight iron in your hands here it's going to run out a lot more uh, than being in the air for okay uh so we've got a target um halfway i say we've got um you've got uh, well, how far is that i'd say so, so 20 yards 20 20 yards to that no what's that no not yards that's yeah, 20 foot, yeah. about that. Um, so you want to land it around here. Learn to land it around here and it should run up to the golf ball. And that's more of a chip shot with your eight iron there. Straight in? Straight in, ball position in the middle. Stance is slightly more narrow, okay? Uh, because there's not, um, not much uh, distance and not more, a lot more power. It's very much like a putt uh, from here. Um, Use, no using any wrist ang wrist hinge here. It's just using your shoulders. So as your shoulders go, if you take take hold, your shoulders will go up, top of the swing, and turn through like so. Okay, none of this wrist angle here. Okay, um, you could put a bit more pressure on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. Again, you want to encourage yourself to hit down on the golf ball. So when you do a practice swing, make sure you're hitting in front of the golf ball uh, rather than behind it. Okay, yeah. So that's a Brief introduction on your chip shots. Keep your head a little bit, so as you've got your pressure on your left hand side, just keep your head a bit more over the ball, no, the other way. 
it there. So encourage yourself, there's a little bit more weight on the left-hand side there and keep it there throughout the whole swing. Good result, not far off, a bit, bit flicky. So what I would like to see from flicky, yeah, will you use your wrists a little bit? So what I'd like to see from you, uh, if you take hold, top of the swing, okay? And I want you to start moving those hips towards the top of the golf ball, just turn the asset, asset from there. Mm -hmm. You've got to use your body to get through. So you, as the takeaway, using your shoulders and the body, turn your hips towards the target and then you're through, okay? So it's kind of like that position there. Rather than using your, hat, um, your wrists, that's it. And keep your head over the golf ball. Do all that. <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay, not far off. Good strike. Um, so what Keith will need to start learning is the length of, di length of shot. So it's very much, um, a a very similar like a putt. So the length of swing is very, it's quite short. Yeah. Um, and what you start want to learn to do is to land it sh um, on the fringe of the green, okay? Um, to to, uh, to let it run in, run in there, okay? So typically a lot of golfers would generally use a sand wedge to get the ball over there, okay? Now what you find it's easier to use a, 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 a higher club uh, with more run on it. Uh, it's a shorter swing. Um, there's an old saying, uh, if you can putt it, no, if you can chip it, try to putt it. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to pitch in it, try to chip it in there. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is, is that basically the shorter the swing, the easier it is, yep. basically. Um, yeah, so that's your chipping. Have another go. Nice, you done. Very good. I don't know whether you saw that there. That'd be in for a pot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice, you done. Well done. So that's your chipping. Mm -hmm. uh, let's follow on. Let's go on to putting. So last of all, we're doing putting. We've nearly completed your... He's nearly a pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so how many putts do you expect to get in, in, when you're over on the putting green? I'd, I'd be aiming for two, but it's more like three. Is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Aiming for two, definitely. Uh, and everywhere on the golf course, you want to see yourself getting it on, on two. Mm -hmm. um, one, brilliant. Mm -hmm. uh, two, uh, good that's where you want to go three you don't want to do two two too many threes no. do only three putts although you are going to do that mm -hmm. uh, and um so this one here is a, a great drill for you to to learn uh how to get the ball under pressure uh, at this range here so at this range here you typically you're going to be about 50 percent mm -hmm. tall pro professionals or golfers will be about 70 percent it's about three foot range mm -hmm. um so We'd like to get you at a sort of a, a, a moderate uh, percentage to get the ball in the hole. Um, so, on your putters, you've got line, lines in your putters. And most gold, modern golf clubs have got lines in the putters. Um, use the lines of the golf balls as well. Most um, golf balls have got modern uh, lines. Uh, most modern golf balls have got lines on them. Use that line to line it up. Uh, that would really help for alignment. So, really, it, the, there's two most important things when it comes to putting is your know, accuracy and distance control yep. okay uh, at this point here it's not it's not so much distance control it's more accuracy so use those to your advantage these lines here okay so line it up like so um, and you're gonna go around this clock here mm -hmm. um, you've got sort of you might be able to see this from here so you've got four uh, T pegs here um, and yeah, see how many you can get in so we might speed it up here. <laughs> I'll put the golf balls here for you. Cool. All right, so three out of four, very good. Um, work towards a point where you can get see how many you, low you can go. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would like to see a practice swing perhaps, that'll help help uh, the, the routine out a little bit. So you're not looking for a back, straight back and straight through. Some golfers tend to see, especially when you're uh, looking at putters, they've got like different sort of versions out there. Um, you're not necessarily looking for a straight back, straight through. You always should have a little bit of an arc to your putt, to your stroke. Um, very good. So accuracy when it comes to these short range shots here, okay? Next, what we're gonna do is distance control. So distance control when it comes to putting. There's a lot of variables when it comes to putting. Uh, the lie, uh, the uphill, uh, downhills, um, the speed of the greens. Um, but here what we're gonna do is just a brief introduction of how to learn the distance control. Okay, so this is a fa fantastic game. What you've learned is you got yourself has got like what 85 percent chance of getting it in yep. no what was it you missed three out of no, you got 75 percent chance of getting it in at the moment yep. so if you're in here you got 75 percent chance to get it in okay so you're looking to get the ball in this position here okay you don't want to go over the line you don't want to go short of the line okay if it goes in the hole happy days mm -hmm. but um you want to leave it around the area there okay yep. Once you've left, when, once you've gone in that position there, you can then move back to the, to the next one, okay? If you've gone short or long, mm -hmm. you'll have to move forward one, yeah. all right? It's a really great game. It's a quite a frustrating game, um, but it really gets you thinking about your length of swing, uh, length of swing and your distance control. Yeah. So when you want to have the ability to go wherever you are on the putting green, to leave it around the area there to give you that 75% chance of getting it in. Yeah. All right? Well, so when, when obviously when, when we started the lessons, for you to give me the tool about using the distance in between the legs. Okay, so yeah. That, that definitely, that's helped me no end from Brilliant. Like, from start to finish. So the length I didn't really have anything to aim to, off. Oh, okay. I was almost going in like, and I didn't have anything to calculate the swing. So you you saying that has, has definitely given me something to, to aim for. Yeah, well done. A lot of the times, I do quite find that they're going in. It's because the golfer not thinking about the hole, it's thinking about more the distance control. All in case, you just a case of just lining it up, get the distance control, you're, you're, you're pretty much gonna get in the hole. Yeah. Um, this is all off that, off, off when you told me about the, 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 the feet. The feet the, yeah, so the feet, using your feet as a guide, uh, so if you take the cup back uh, and then through equal portions, that's going to get the golf ball uh, so far. Uh, and then obviously if you want to go, ball, you want, if you want the ball to go further, it's just a more of a longer swing. And then you maybe let's like, say your feet position is going to be further outside your foot and through equal portion between the two. Ah, oh, nearly. Very good. Nice little tap in from there. Ah, oh, is that? Yeah, no, you, it's a tap in from there. But this game here, you'll have to work then then drop forward one um, to get it in that area there. But good, yeah. well done. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to go back to the uh, studio now. Back to the studio, I've always wanted <laughs> Go back to the, uh, the um, yeah, studio. I'll see you soon. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video, that brief in um, insight and the journey of a beginner's course of lessons there. Um, how did you find it? As an introduction to golf, it's, it's definitely something you need because otherwise you're just wasting hour after hour on on almost, almost creating a game for yourself when you don't know the foundations of golf. So, yeah, for 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 someone like me who's who's never struck a golf ball in his life, to to waste three weeks, two to three weeks on on doing something that isn't going to help my game, and then stepping into your lessons has definitely given me the foundations to go out and and play golf and more importantly enjoy it. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad. I mean, that's all I'm doing it for. It, it for the for me coaching is to see golfers like uh, Keith here um, progress um, and 
I get a great enjoyment out in playing golf and to see someone else get enjoyment as much as I do, I, I feel that I've done my job. Um, so uh, he's done uh, a beginner's course of lessons, which is £79. Um, it's three and a half hours uh, of coaching. What you're, not doing, what you're not doing is you're doing three and a half hours all at once. You're doing three and a half hours over a period of time. So it all depends on how the, uh, how the golfer, how you can um, take in information. I remember done it once for American football, uh, professional American football player. Mm -hmm. um, he says, that's fine. He says, it's 3.5 hours. This is what I do in my training. He was knackered after that. <laughs> so I kind of wouldn't advise to do it three and a half hours of, of tuition. Um, maybe an hour to start off with. Always a nice one to start off with, or maybe um, pitching an iron to start off with, uh, and then go from there. Um, yeah, so. It's, it's, it's definitely beneficial, and, and it was definitely tailored to me. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier on, it wasn't scripted at all. So you, I didn't come and, and you were reading from a textbook on how to teach golf. You were looking at what I needed and, and where to work on to make my game improve. <laughs> But more importantly, just give me the basics that I was lacking completely. Yeah. Completely. And, and obviously, there's been some really good advice on, on the, the clubs and stuff like that. So I went out like any beginner and just, just looked at the shelves and thought, what do I need? And just got everything. Yeah. And, and it turns out, you know, I was wasting my time for three weeks because the clubs didn't fit me and you identified that. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and then we got fitted and the difference in that plus the lessons has now sent me off with yeah. so much confidence and enjoyment for the game. Yeah, yeah. so I think it's worth mentioning too. So since I've had my lessons, yeah. uh, my best friend, he's been playing golf for a number of years now um, and he's actually booked his beginner lessons. Yeah, okay. In like, even though he's like a few years into his journey, just because I, I'm not one of the people who's gonna take your lessons and, and go out on the golf course, but he could see the things that I were doing had uh, a fundamental right. reason for it. Yeah. So he wants to go out now and he's booked his lessons for Saturday coming. Brilliant. Um, and he's also took the advice and got fitted clubs. Yeah. Obviously quite expensive for him because yeah. he used to buy a whole new set, but it's, yeah. it's definitely it's definitely been beneficial. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. You're going to be getting a, a text soon saying I've, old, I've had a hole in one and then I'm basically going to be a pro, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, well, if I've done that, then... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, can I get uh, get it signed then? Can I get it all signed? And I'm gonna give I'll give you the flag. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no Brilliant. Problem. No, thank you. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you again soon. Later. Bye for now.